Hi, welcome to the EEV blog, an electronics engineering video blog of interest to anyone involved in electronics design. I'm your host, Dave Jones. Hi, I've been working on a project that's uh, powered from a couple of, well, two uh, lithium ion cells in series, and I thought I'd add like a little uh, battery gauge type thing to it, just a little LED bar graph or something, you know, that shows the level of how much uh, battery life is left in the product. And there's quite a few ways to do this, but anyway, I thought I'd build something up and uh, try and get something working. So, it's breadboard time! Now, as I said, there's a couple of ways to do this. Uh, one is to uh, go real high-tech and modern, use one of these uh, battery gauge ICs. Um, they're basically, uh, they basically measure the charge going into the battery and the charge coming out. And you can read them out with, you know, they've got ADCs in them and a little uh, memory and micro and stuff. You can read the data out via a serial bus to a micro and all that sort of stuff. And it's all pretty fancy. And, well, I don't need something that fancy. I just need a simple basic bar graph that, you know, when the battery's full, when it's fully charged, because this will be rechargeable, right? So as the thing charges up, the bar graph goes up, and when it gets to full, it shows that it's full. When you're using the product, the bar graph will start out at full, and it'll drop down to zero, and maybe 10 LEDs would do, you know, one of those little uh, 10 LED bar graph modules you can get for 50 cents. They're very cheap, readily available. Use something like that. Now, I could use a microcontroller to do this, you know, it's got an ADC built in, a little picker, an AVR or something. Uh, but that's, uh, you know, that's the obvious uh, solution these days. Just put a micro in it. I don't want that. I thought I'd go a bit old school and it brought back memories. Well, how do I drive a little 10 LED bar graph? Of course, the LM3914, absolute classic IC. It's been around for decades and decades. I used it extensively when I was a kid. It's a little uh, special purpose analog chip from uh, National Semiconductor, who's now been bought out by TI, bloody hell, go figure. Anyway, uh, LM3914, classic chip. It's right up there with like the triple five timer, in my opinion, in terms of nostalgia and just one of those special purpose chips that just does its job really quite well. So I thought I'd uh, get out my old parts bin, get an LM3914 and prototype it up. Let's give it a go. Now, of course, we can't just jump into breadboarding something without knowing our specs. Now, for this project, I'm going to be using two um, uh, standard uh, 18650 lithium ion uh, cells. You're probably familiar with these. They're used in a ton of stuff these days, not only to make up uh, bigger packs, but individually as well. And uh, by the way, um, as it uh, says down here, uh, this is a Panasonic data sheet, okay, I've just, you know, a good brand one, a good uh, data sheet, I almost certainly won't end up using a Panasonic battery, but they're all going to be uh, similar characteristics, so I'm just using this as a representative example. Now, there's a safety note down here, I'll just mention, uh, basically uh, Panasonic will not sell the individual cells because they're unprotected, and as I've mentioned before, we've talked about lithium ion cells, they can be dangerous, so you should only use the lithium ion cells that are integrated with the appropriate safety circuitry built in. So um, they're uh, probably the majority of ones you can buy on the market, but make sure you get the ones with the protection circuitry. It'll have a little PCB in there, and so it'll be slightly longer, and it will have a PCB in there that actually protects the battery and stops um, uh, overcharge and over discharge and, 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 you know, a safety factor, stop them exploding. Anyway, uh, that doesn't change any of the characteristics. That's just a side thing. Now, we will look at the uh, characteristic discharge curves of this battery and see what we need in terms of specs for a battery level gauge. And you may recognize this. This is the characteristic discharge curve of, in this case, the 18650 uh, lithium ion cell, which we're looking at here. Now, because my project actually doesn't use one cell, it uses two cells uh, in series or a, or a battery pack, uh, the voltage on the y-axis here, this is only for one cell. So um, if we're talking, say, in terms of four volts, we have to double that for all of our calculations and all of our thinking uh, because we've got a battery pack of two cells. And if, we, if it's three volts, we'll be talking in terms of six volts. Uh, so you should be familiar with this. We've talked about it in previous uh, blogs. It's a standard uh, characteristic 
discharge curve of the cell voltage versus time. In this case, they actually call it, call it the discharge capacity. They've done an extra calculation, but it's effectively uh, time here. We don't have to worry about the milliamp hour capacity really. Now they've got three characteristic uh, curves here for different load currents. In this t case, it's constant uh, current, and they're assuming a three volt uh, cutoff, which is, there it is, it's three volts. So uh, pretty much you're only using the capacity between say there and there. So you're not using all of the capacity of the battery, but you're using most of it, and that's good enough. So my product will have a battery uh, cutoff or a battery low voltage, I'll call it three volts, or because I'm using two, it'll be six volts. So we know that we want a, uh, let's call it a V low equal to six volts. Okay, that'll be our low voltage for our bar graph. And, uh, and of course, this is a 4.2 volt lithium ion um, cell. It uh, has a constant um, voltage, constant current, um, or constant voltage charge current, uh, charge voltage of 4.2 volts. So when you uh, disconnect it, it's going to start out at 4.2. So we need a V high, let's call it, of 8.2. 4 or volts or 2 times that. So we've determined uh, what our upper and lower threshold voltages of our bar graph will be. So if we've got our bar graph like this that goes all the way down and you've got 10 LEDs like that, then this one will represent you know, a maximum of 8.4 and that one will represent a low of 6 volts like that. Now uh, the if you really want to be accurate with a bar graph uh, lead battery gauge like this then you should take into account the fact that this curve is not perfectly linear it doesn't just go straight down like that but as you can see it's not too far off um, it's it's uh, more linear when you get to the higher current levels in this case uh, uh, 4.3 uh, amps but at uh, 2 amps which is basically 1c um, it you know it tapers off at the end here, so you've got some gross non-linearity at the end of the curve. But really, that's good enough for my purposes. I'm not going to fuss over that. I don't want some intelligent uh, control, you know, microcontroller uh, thing that sort of you know compensates for the graph and all that sort of stuff. It's good enough. It's fairly linear. You know, it's not too bad at all. And you can just uh, mentally. Uh, know that when it gets down the bottom, it's a bit non-linear, so that's okay. But as the product's being used, you will see the bar graph drop down like that, and that's good enough. So we have our upper and lower threshold voltages. Excellent. Let's go design a circuit. And here we go, the data sheet for the classic LM3914. And wow, this brings back some memories. It really does. As a kid, a, a classic project you'd do is use an LM3914 as a, you know, a, a uh, audio level meter or something. Uh, this is actually a linear version. You can actually get a logarithmic version specifically uh, for audio uh, VU meters and things like that. But it's a very versatile device that can be used a lot more than just a, it's a dot bar display driver. So. Um, basically, it can actually uh, be a dual mode, a uh, bar or a dot display mode, which is great. You can choose which one. In the case of this particular project, because it's battery powered, you might use the uh, dot mode because you don't want um, the in all of the LEDs lit up uh, on your bar graph because that might chew extra power. And really, it doesn't give you any more um, information. It's just visually a bit nicer, the uh, bar graph. So it's great that we've got that choice there. It can uh, operate um, LEDs, LCDs, vacuum tubes. Um, it's expandable to more than uh, 10. It's a 10 uh, digit um, or a 10 LED bar graph uh, driver. It's got an internal reference voltage which we'll make use of. Um, it operates down to single supplies of 3 volts up to, uh, up to about 15 volts I think it is. So up to quite high voltages. So it'll operate directly from the battery pack where uh, we're going to use and um, the inputs operate down to ground and you can and it's got programmable LED current so you don't actually need any dropper resistors in this thing it's great you actually save uh, component 
count with this thing. You can program it from two milliamps up to 30. Fantastic. We'll use uh, two milliamps down around that level today because uh, we want, you know, this is a this takes power from the battery. So we, you know, we don't want to waste too much power. So we want our LEDs. We don't want to operate them at 30 milliamps. It's crazy. We'll operate them down at two or three milliamps or so. Um, it can withstand overloads, all sorts of things. Anyway, I love this chip and uh, we're going to use it. It's simple. Um, well, it's not that simple, actually. Uh, you've got to tweak it a bit, as we'll uh, no doubt uh, find out, but it's a very versatile chip. I highly recommend you uh, check it out if you're after a, um, an LED bar graph of some form. Now here's the chip in its uh, standard configuration of a 0 to 5 volt uh, bar graph meter. Now um, this is, we don't want this, okay, because we want to uh, have our range. You remember we said uh, we would have a range from uh, 6 volts to uh, 8.4 volts. So that is what's called an expanded scale because you're not going from 0 to 5, you're actually expanding the scale, I, I, I know you're actually shorting in it, it's actually the span is actually lower than uh, say a typical 0 to 5, but you're expanding because you're expanding above the ground reference level, which is the uh, basic configuration of this thing. Now, they will have an application circuit for the expanded scale meter, let's take a look at that. And here's the application circuit for the expanded scale meter in dot or bar mode, so there's actually a single uh, pin switch on here which actually can select between dot and bar mode. It's really quite easy. Don't worry about this um, AC transformer and rectifier up here. That's got nothing to do with it and they tell you that down here. It's just to show that it needs no uh, hardly any filtering at all and the thing still works. But basically uh, our expanded scale meter we can get away with just a couple of resistors down here. Now they're showing a couple of uh, trim pots down here to sort of, you know, get in there and tweak the thing. But I don't want to do that. We, we want to learn a bit more about this chip and how it works uh, internally and see if we can actually calculate uh, the values instead of just um, throwing in some pots and just tweaking it until we get our upper and lower voltage thresholds that we need. And here's some more info on uh, a greatly expanded scale bar mode only they're talking about. Mm, look at all this, you know, that looks that looks quite messy. I don't like it. There's the two trim pots in there, but there's other little uh, stopper resistors. There's another one here. Uh, it's all a bit messy. I don't like it. We're going to uh, find a simpler solution than that. And at the same time, try and understand how this chip works internally. Now, here's the uh, internal block diagram of the device and it does look uh, pretty simple but it's actually a bit more advanced than this. This is quite a uh, simplified um, block diagram but it'll, it's uh, quite functional and allows us to uh, work out what's going on here. Now as you'll see this is our uh, voltage uh, signal input as they call it. It's got a uh, diode clamp here for over voltage and stuff like that. It's got a buffer and it just drives a bunch of comparators um, which are driven by this resistor, this internal resistor ladder here. Each one of these resistors is 1K uh, and it gives you a typical uh, value further on um, in the uh, specs for the device and they drive the LEDs over here. So it's a very basic, um, a, a very basic just a window comparator um, or a bar graph uh, dot comparator type thing and it's got an internal voltage reference which we'll take a look at. Um, it's got the power pin, ground pin and not much else, just the upper and lower threshold voltages which go directly across um, the um, uh, directly across the divider resistors here which determine the individual voltage thresholds for each of those comparators and then in turn each of those LEDs. It's very basic uh, stuff. You can build up uh, something like this just using, um, uh, just using a bunch of comparators yourself and, and the resistors and things like that, but it's all built onto one chip. It's beautiful. Now, one of the keys here is this uh, internal voltage reference source of 1.25 volts. Now, one of the important things to note about this is that uh, it is not ground referenced internally. It goes out to a separate pin, which they call ref adjust. Um, which in the basic application it is showing that it's actually grounded here, but you don't have to ground it. You can actually offset that by a certain voltage um, if you like, um, and you can do various uh, things with it. And likewise, the lower 
uh, the lower, uh, what they call R low here, the pin R low, is not tied to ground, but in the standard circuit it is um, it is tied to ground, so it, the basic voltage range is from zero volts upwards like that at each tap. So, you know, if it's zero to five volts, it might be zero, half a volt, one, etc., etc. But because that pin is effectively floating, and so is this voltage reference, it's quite versatile in what you can do with it and allows you to do um, expanded scale displays by offsetting various voltages, which is what we're going to do here today. And they've been very clever with this device as well. This resistor, which is the uh, load uh, for the voltage reference here, actually determines the LED brightness. So it's sort of, um, that's, it's quite clever, but can actually be a pain in the butt because then that um, uh, interacts with your uh, voltage offset uh, uh, voltage offset resistors as you'll see and things like that but um, it is quite clever I like it so that resistor effectively or, or the load on there on the voltage reference effectively determines the LED brightness and that'll be a based on a formula which we'll find it further on in the data sheet. Now they've got a nice little section here on the internal voltage reference and how it works and uh, it's it basically works the voltage reference is internal like that V positive, negative, it's inside like that, and it always generates 1.25 uh, volts, uh, pretty much regardless of how you've uh, got it configured externally, but uh, it will generate 1.25 volts. So uh, if you hook, um, let's call them, well, they're called R1 and R2 here, and that's what we'll call them in our circuit as well. Don't worry about it now, we'll go into it uh, later, but uh, that will generate 1.25 volts across that resistor there if you've got it wired if R1's wired directly across those pins. So that, you can use Ohm's law, 1.25 volts divided by R1 generates a current which goes down there and hence flows into here. But there is also a um, an, what they call, call an uh, error term. There's a leakage current for the, um, for the uh, voltage reference itself and that will be an additional current there and they call it uh, I adjust so that means this current here the total current I through here will be equal to I R1 plus I adjust like that and uh, that's quite important we might have to take that into account later when we build up our circuit right so let's start designing this thing and see what we can come up with now as we uh, determined before we basically want our voltage reference range for our window uh, here we looked at before we wanted 8.4 volts up here so this um, R uh, high pin which they call it uh, needs to be at 8.4 volts and we wanted uh, 6 volts down here on our R low pin. If you do the math if you subtract 8.4 volts from 6.4 volts what do you get? You get 2.4 volts okay now what happens if you divide that by two what do you get i'm glad you asked you get 1.2 volts now 1.2 volts is pretty darn close to the 1.25 volt voltage reference here so i think we can use that we can be clever and just use that as our uh, voltage range for here so all we need to do is multiply that by two to give us our range on these our voltage range on these two pins so we need a circuit external to here that sets these two pins at um, uh, basically half these values or for a single cell uh, we need to be 4.2 volts on this particular pin and we need to be down here we need to be three volts on this pin down here and then and in, in our signal here, we can actually, our input, we can use a voltage divider, let's say that's 10K, and that one's 10K as well. Our input signal, if we connect that to our plus V battery, if we connect it, oh, sorry, that was off the screen. If we connect it down to our uh, V battery down here, we can use a voltage divider to uh, chop the battery voltage in half. Now, this I think is important because these inputs here to this chip won't go all the way to the voltage rail. Now this is our voltage here 
and if we connect this to plus V bat as well, because we want to power this entire circuit from the battery under test. We don't want to have to, you know, power it from a separate supply. That's just silly. So um, these inputs won't operate all the way right up to this uh, level of the battery. So, but if we have the battery voltage with the voltage divider here, we have it, then uh, it should be within the workable range of the comparators and the rest of the circuitry inside. And if you have that, as we said up here, it's we want a range of 1.2 volts over which our LEDs light up, or 1.25 is near enough for my purposes. So, um, ideally, all we want to do is connect the um, voltage reference directly onto these pins here. And if we did that, if we actually uh, did it as per the circuit that's shown here, if we grounded this, grounded this, and this connects to the VREF output there, then this would, the chip is designed to work over a range of 0 to 1.25 volts. So these LEDs will light up at uh, 0, um, it will, you know, the first LED will light up and then all the way up to 1.25 volts. That's a standard circuit. But as we've mentioned before, we want an expanded scale one. So we have to offset this pin here. We have to offset R low by the minimum range we want. So we have to add three volts to this pin down here. And that's what we need to accomplish somehow externally to here. So how do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, let's get rid of that ground point there. We don't want that. Let's just get rid of that resistor because it's in the way. We'll replace it with our own resistor. And let's draw in another resistor here. We want a resistor there. And let's tie it onto the ref adjust pin. We'll call that R1. And we want another resistor down here, which we'll call R2. And we will ground that. Now, uh, this R low down here, we want to get rid of that ground. And we want to connect R low up here to the bottom of that because we know our range is 1.25 volts or exactly the same as this voltage reference. And we can leave this also connected up to here. Okay, so our uh, R high up here is connected to the positive side of the voltage reference. Uh, R low down here is connected to the negative side of the voltage reference. And all we want to do is choose these resistors so that we get three volts super uh, three volts across there and that will raise our voltage up by the three volts we need easy and if you remember this circuit over here there's actually a formula for the uh, led current now this is something we need to consider up front and it'll become obviously obvious why now the formula is uh the led current is approximately equal to 12.5 on r1 so r1 we need to be um basically uh 12.5 divided by our lead current uh which in this case i said i'd like about two milliamps i'd like to be at as as low as possible so it doesn't draw excess current from my battery. So 12.5 divided by uh, 2 milliamps, you whack that into the calculator, 12.5 divided by 2 milliamps, and you get roughly uh, 6,250 ohms. And you can see the realization of that formula on this uh, characteristic curve here of uh, lead current versus the reference uh, load current. And if you uh, have a reference load current of one milliamp, you get an LED current of, there it is, 12.5. So that's where that factor of 12.5 uh, comes from, and it's fairly linear, not absolutely perfect, but uh, close enough. So, so we're actually going to have a current through, um, R, through R1 of 1.25 volts, which is our voltage reference, on our 6,250 ohms, which is equal to uh, 200 microamps and if you have a look at the uh, translate that to the graph over here of course it all works out so all the math is nice it all works out and 200 microamps this is up 500 microamps here so 200 just puts us on the bottom of that uh, curve there which is around about the 2 milliamp figure that we want the curve doesn't actually extend that far but it's uh, near enough so there you go it all works out so over here we want a current there there of 200 
micro amps which will give us our um, LED current of you know uh, near enough to uh, two milliamps basically that's our target but R1 here curiously right which we calculated the figure here of 6250 ohms that's great if nothing else was attached but what do we have here check it out look up here we have this resistor divider network directly in parallel with R1. We've got these resistors in here we have to take into account. So we have to add these in parallel with our, um, well, in parallel with R1. We haven't actually calculated the true value of R1 yet. We want R1, sure, we want R1 to be 6,250, but we're not going to use a uh, 6.25K resistor in there because we've got all these other resistors in parallel. So we need to calculate the true value of R1 uh, when you include these ones in parallel. So we need to find a target value of R1 here for that uh, 6,250 ohms, which we calculated before, but based on uh, this, resistor, this resistor divider here in parallel. So we need to know what value of R1 will give us the total resistance of 6,250 ohms here. And I've done it down here. If you look at your uh, standard uh, parallel resistor formula, R total, equals uh, 1 over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. That gives you total parallel resistance. But we need to find, we know what value we want. We want um, 6,250 ohms as a total. So we've got an unknown term in here. Uh, one of these terms is unknown, and we know the other one, which is the resistor divider. So we just uh, sort of rewrite that formula. So we're trying to calculate R1 here which is our value, uh, and if you rearrange the formula, you actually get um, one on uh, R1, which we calculated, which is the 6,250 uh, ohms, minus, instead of plus, it's now minus, one on um, the re voltage, the resistance divider, the value of the resistor divider. And if you plug the numbers into the formula, it's one on one on 6,250 minus one on 12K, where did we get 12K from, I hear you ask? Well, if you look at the uh, resistor ladder up here, there's only 10, there's only 10 resistors there and they're all marked 1K. So you might think it might be 12K, but no, I don't know, you've got to double check these things. Don't go by those block diagrams, only go by the true electrical characteristics. And sure enough, if you look elsewhere in the data sheet, um, the voltage divider, there it is. The divider resistance total of pin six to pin four is a typical value of 12k so it's not 10k as you'd get from the block diagram just be careful of that sort of thing it can range anywhere from 8 to 17 but is it 12 i don't know let's plug out 12k into our formula and try it out i don't think it's going to be up near the maximum it might be down near the minimum uh, there's quite a large uh, upside there on that but we'll take a value of 12k which is what we've done here plug that in and R1 is just over 13K, there it is. So we want to use a 13.04K, uh, 13K04 K there for R1. Doesn't need to be that precise, why? Because it's only for the lead dropper resistor. That's it, it's, it basically this resistor here is only calculating the lead uh, current. So it's not that vital really. Now we have a value of the resistor we can use for R1. Our current down here hasn't changed. Uh, we calculated that before at 200 microamps because it's 13K in parallel with uh, the resistor divider, 6,250 ohms uh, divided by 1.25 oh, 1 volts divided by 6,250 ohms is 200 microamps. So we know we've got 200 microamps flowing down R1. And this is where we need to now calculate R2 which actually increases um, our, ex well, it generates our uh, voltage drop across it to raise up our low input voltage and create to three volts and create our expanded scale voltmeter. So we need to calculate R2 for a three volt drop based on current down here, but it's not just 200 microamps. Remember before, it's 200 microamps plus the error term here. And there you go. If you remember back to this diagram here, we talked about that R1 and we talked about that error term uh, being the uh, leakage uh, current of the um, uh, voltage reference 
itself. So we need to find that value in the data sheet to find out what this value actually is. And if you have a look here, it actually tells you since the 120 microamp current maximum from the adjust terminal. Well, that's it. Once again, don't take any of this application stuff for granted. Go over to your um, electrical characteristics table because this is the only one that matters. So if we look for our voltage reference here, we can find out, there it is, adjust pin current. There it is, 75 microamps typical, and sure enough it is, they were correct, it is 120 microamps maximum. So they weren't lying over there like they were with the resistor divider up here. Um, so we'll take a typical value, we'll take the typical value, because I don't think it will be near to the um, upper maximum. It could be, uh, if you want to design worst case, as we've explained in previous blogs, you might have, you might use the maximum, but I'm going to use the typical value and see what we get, see how far it is out. So we'll take this 70, that as I adjust equals 75 microamps. So the total going down here through R2 is 200 microamps plus 75 microamps or 275 microamps total. So if we now calculate R2 here, R2 is very simple. It's going to be our offset voltage we want on this pin of 3 volts. Okay, because it's connected through to there. 3 volts divided by Ohm's law, 275 microamps. Total current flowing through there gives us a value of 2,909 ohms. Bingo! We now have our two values there and there for our circuit. So if we build up the circuit, hopefully we should get a working uh, expanded scale voltmeter that operates from 3 volts up to 4.2 volt threshold voltage, but because we've got the voltage divider down here, it'll be from a 6 volt battery up to 8.4 volts. Let's build it up and try it. And here's our final circuit, which we're going to build up on the breadboard using the LM3914. It's a two cell lithium ion battery gauge. Will it work? Let's try it. And uh, here's R1 and R2, which we spent so much time dicking around calculating, and we came out with around about uh, 13K for R1, which will give us roughly uh, 2 milliamps or so per LED, and R2 was uh, 10.91K, or 10.909, and it just so happens that that's exactly, um, you can make that up precisely using a 12K and a 120K in parallel. So. That's what I've built up here, and uh, our input voltage divider here to 10Ks, they can be uh, pretty much any um, odd value you like. 10K is not a bad value. It's all powered. You'll notice the whole thing is powered from the battery under test. So here it is. Ta-da! Let's see if it works. All right, what we've got here is we've got the uh, Fluke 87 in measuring the input voltage here, which uh, it would come from our battery, but in this case it's coming from a uh, variable bench power supply. I've got my 10 LEDs build, uh, uh, lined up here. They should actually light up in this direction, so this is the uh, low um, end of the voltage range. This is the high end, so we expect this one to turn on at around about uh, 6 volts and this one up here to uh, turn on at around about uh, 8.4 or so. Um, I've got a bypass uh, cap as well which we uh, didn't talk about. I've got a, uh, it's just a half microfarad uh, bypass cap in there. Anything will do fine. You'll notice that it doesn't need the lead dropper resistors. Really uh, nice uh, aspect to this. So um, there's my two input divider resistors. Uh, there's my uh, 13k there and there's my um, uh, 10k uh, 909 there and well let's give it a go let's wind up the wick so the um, power supply shows the exact uh, battery voltage let's see what happens of course it's not designed to operate this low oh look they're they're all coming on there you go there's a weird side effect which uh, you wouldn't know about unless you actually built this up and breadboarded at a very at a two volt uh, battery voltage they're all going to light up so you may actually think that's an error that's actually an error condition because um, it shows that you've got full battery voltage but you've only got two volts it's crazy but uh, you um, your circuit should have uh, cut out under that so it's not a big deal but there you go that's just an interesting little side fact it's designed to work from uh, three volts onwards the chip so it looks like it is 
no problems at all. Let's wind up the wick and we shouldn't see any LEDs on at all until that 6 volt mark, which is our battery low. Here we go. Whoops. We're on. Well, we're smack on 6 volt volts. It hasn't lit up yet. Obviously, we've got a bit of... Well, there we go. 6.06 .06 volts. Bingo. And then as you go, you can wind up the wick like that and it looks like it's doing a pretty good job. We should get around 8 point, just, it should turn on about 8.2, it does. There you go. So, the bingo, it works. I'm actually quite uh, surprised that, um, well, not surprised, we did the calculations, but uh, I expected some error in there with the error uh, adjust term. We'll have to measure that. So I didn't expect it to be uh, spot on, but it is. It's pretty darn close. I'm, I'm happy with that. I wouldn't have to tweak those values at all. I'm... I'm quite impressed with that. Let's wind the voltage up even more just to check that it still works. And it should work up to uh, 15 volts as the maximum operating voltage of this chip. So just make sure it work works up to that. We won't take it any further. And I like it. It's a winner. Now, of course, that was set to bar graph display mode, which actually is going to draw a lot of current if uh, all those LEDs are on. It'll draw at least uh, 2 milliamps per LED plus the quiescent uh, current, the operating current of the chip. So uh, let's convert that to bar mode, uh, to dot mode. To do that, you just leave uh, pin 9 down there floating. So we'll leave it floating. And let's check that um, dot mode works as well. It's just over 6 volts. There we go. Bang. It's on. And... Bingo! Dot mode works. It's nice. Now, one of the nice features of the LM3194 is that it doesn't have any dead spots. You'll notice there is no way that I can make... I can make both LEDs come on, but I can't get an error condition where no LED will come on. So where the voltage threshold is right between the LEDs because it's got... Um, the data sheet, I think, claims a 1 millivolt uh, threshold between or uh, overlap between the LEDs. So one millivolt overlap means that you will never get an error condition where an LED is not actually switched on. So dot mode, you, you can trust that you're not going to have any dead spots within there. That's built into the design of the LM3914 and you'll notice it's just it beautifully toggles. You know, you might have two LEDs lit up, but that's just fine because you've got noise on there and Bingo! It's, there you go, 8.3 and dot mode works just great. And once again, we can take it up to 15. No problems at all. I declare that to be a winner, both dot and bar mode. And of course, if there's no LEDs on, you know it's under 6 volts. All right, let's check our uh, lead current. So we expected around about uh, 2 milliamps, but it wouldn't surprise me if um, it's uh, not, you know, if it's over or under that, because uh, that's determined by that 13K resistor which we had in this circuit, which, remember, is dependent upon that very wide variable range of the resistor divider inside the chip. So let's wind it up to 6 volts till our lead turns on. Bingo, it does. Ah, uh, 2.8 milliamps. There you go. Um, it's a bit over, so uh, it's not exactly the 2 milliamps we expected. So you could actually tweak that uh, 13K value there if you wanted to, um, just to adjust the uh, LED current that you wanted. But as you can see, um, that LED is still uh, reasonably bright enough, um, even at 2 milliamps. And these are 20-year-old LEDs I just had in my junk bin. So if you use a uh, modern uh, high-efficiency LED bar graph, um, they should be more than bright enough at uh, 2.8 milliamps. So I'm happy with that. I don't need to tweak that at all. And what's the quiescent uh, current of our circuit? Well, um, I've just under five, uh, six volts there, so no LEDs are on. It's around about uh, five milliamps or so. And if we wind it down, you'll notice that, uh, yeah, no problems. So that's, um, so it's going to consume at least uh, five milliamps. And when you switch an LED on, let's go up to six volts, get one on. There we go, bingo, it jumps up to uh, 8 milliamps, and it doesn't matter, it's going to take around about uh, 8.5 milliamps maximum, regardless of uh, which LED, you'll notice that uh, it is slowly actually increasing um, as we go up in uh, dot mode, so there you go, it looks like up to 9 milliamps maximum, I would um, I'd safely say uh, round that to about 10 milliamps uh, maximum, 
current draw in dot mode. And in bar graph mode, of course, it's going to take uh, considerably more than that. There we go, all the LEDs lit up and uh, 35 milliamps. So as you can see, you pay a fairly hefty uh, price premium there for uh, using the uh, bar display mode. And if this is uh, measuring the consumption of your battery, um, then, you know, if you're only uh, drawing low currents from your battery, then 35 milliamps could be quite significant. But if you're drawing, you know, if, if your product draws a couple of amps or something like that, then you may not worry about that. And you may like the um, effect of the bar graph display mode. And checking our reference voltage there is uh, 1.246 volts, pretty close to the nominal 1.25 volts claimed. And if you remember this error term here of 75 microamps that we included in our calculation for the offset voltage here, how accurate is that? Because you, you remember it was a nominal value of 75 uh, microamps. Could it could have been a maximum of 120 microamps? Well, let's measure the thing. There it is. I've uh, broken pin uh, eight there. So I've and I'm actually using my microcurrent ad adapter here just so that uh, the meter doesn't introduce um, anything funny. And there it is, uh, 56.5 microamps. So it's uh, lower. So technically, our calculations uh, would be slightly out there um, because we assume 75 microamps. But well, it's 56.5 microamps for this particular chip at this current temperature. How about we change the chip? and see if it makes a difference. There you go, I actually changed the chip. It's exactly the same uh, batch and uh, date code, so I'm sorry I didn't have any uh, different ones um, in my set, but there you go, it's uh, almost the same. It's only out by half a microamp. And if you're interested in uh, what type of chip I'm using, it is a genuine national as well. I'm not aware of uh, second source uh, ones for this, but uh, you, you probably can get uh, grey market ones. Or there possibly is a second source somewhere, I don't know. But uh, it's um, 1990 vintage. There you go, the 52nd week in uh, 1990. So this is over 20 years old. But you'll notice, of course, that this uh, new chip doesn't hasn't switched on at six volts like the other one did so there you go it's it's you know the tolerances are slightly different because each chip so is going to be uh, slightly different in terms of uh, temperature coefficient absolute accuracy of the internal 1.25 volt voltage reference and other stuff so really you know um that's why they have the uh, trim pots in the circuit because ultimately you may have to uh, trim this thing if you want to get accurate but i i reckon you could you know for a rough battery gauge for um for for my application anyway i think um i'm not going to worry about with the uh, trim pots i think i can get reasonably close with the fixed value resistors i'm not going to fuss over whether it's you know it's 6.1 or 6.0 volts it's near enough and if you're really keen, the data sheet does uh, mention in the application notes area ways to uh, keep your resistor values low so that the uh, temperature coefficient effects of the internal divider and things like that don't uh, swamp your values and, and stuff like that. So, you know, if you're doing a really serious critical design with an LM3914, you've got to take that sort of stuff into account, especially over the uh, temperature range. Now I've adjusted my input voltage so that first LED is just switched on fully and I'm using my microcurrent to measure that um, uh, reference uh, current leakage value but let's try it without the uh, microcurrent meter and see what happens. We use the uh, shunt inside the meter itself so we won't change anything. We'll just switch over to current mode here so we're no longer using the microcurrent, we're using the internal shunt in that meter and look the LED it's the same 56 microamps the readings exactly the same but this shunt the uh, higher value shunt resistor inside the meter the burden voltage is uh, slightly higher than what the uh, microcurrent is so it's caused that LED to turn off and if we switch it back to our microcurrent like that bingo it switches on see so if we go like that and that is a demonstration of burden voltage in action. And if you granted, it's not that critical in a case like this, but if you've got some serious circuitry you're trying to measure, that can ruin your day. Now, just as a bit of a little aside here, a little uh, tip for you. When you're breadboarding stuff, beware of using resistors, just pulling resistors straight off 
these uh, bandolier things and putting them straight into your breadboard. It can be a real pain in the neck, and I'll show you why. Watch this. If you pull one of them out like that, you can end up with a whole bunch of glue on stuck on the end of your pin. So if you've got that glue stuck on the end of your pin like that, and then you just go try and uh, shove it into your breadboard, you can end up with a bad contact or no contact at all. And that can really ruin your day, uh, especially if you're trying to put two resistors in parallel, like, like you're trying to tweak a value or something. If you put two of them in parallel and one's not making contact and it happens to be the higher value one, then uh, your lower value one can be slightly out and uh, can ruin your day. Trust me. So it's actually uh, sometimes beneficial to actually put resistors in series because then you'll have a gross failure because you know that the single resistor has failed. Anyway, the way to cure that is simple. When you peel them off the bandolier, just make sure you snip off the end. Piece of cake. So there you go. That's a nice little practical two cell lithium ion battery gauge. I like it. It works quite well. We measured its performance. Does pretty much exactly what I want. Spot on. Beautiful. But uh, And it is uh, adjustable for um, other uh, types of battery chemistry, not just lithium ion. You can adjust it. You can do all sorts of things with the LM3914. I love it. It's a great chip. It's very flexible. Someone should do a contest for it. But if you want to adjust the circuit for other uh, battery chemistries, other voltages, different number of cells, you can. Not a problem. Just follow through the steps we went through to calculate the values. There's different configurations you use. The one we use is quite simplistic uh, because we just so happen to have that 1.25 volt range is exactly what we wanted. If you want something lower than that, then uh, R1 in the circuit here. If you've got R1 there, you have to actually uh, put a voltage divider in there to get it smaller, and then you've got to tweak the voltage divider input, and you can do all sorts of things, and you can offset, and you can, ah, till the cows come home. So it's a very flexible circuit, but this implemented quite well. I'm quite happy with it. It uses four resistors, one capacitor, LM3914, and it works as a complete two-cell lithium-ion battery gauge. So there you go. I hope that was fun and useful. Catch you next time, and don't forget to subscribe. There's a button somewhere. Leave comments, whatever. Give it a thumbs up. Beauty.